Good morning, friends. This is Sandra Clay. I'm the pastor at Cook's United Methodist Church, and um, I'm glad to meet with you uh, today this way. I wish we were able to study face to face and to greet the day and to welcome the gift that God has given us. Um, and this will have to do. Um, matter of fact, it gives us a chance to uh, make uh, friends of brothers and sisters all over the place and what you may not know uh, as we uh, meet together in the mornings is that uh, I know uh, all of the names popping up and there are folks from Wilson County uh, here in Tennessee to Collierville to Arkansas uh, to Kentucky uh, down at the Gulf Coast uh, there are folks everywhere who are coming together under the banner of Jesus Christ. And that's why this is such a glory for us to be able to share together. Uh, I am inside today uh, in my office, although it is uh, nice outside in Wilson County. Uh, just a heads up for all of uh, those who are a part of the Cooks family is uh, they're still working on the pavilion and uh, taking care of some things that were damaged after the straight line winds a couple of weeks ago. And so good things are happening uh, and the changes will be evident whenever we get back together again for drive-in worship. Uh, I know that we are coming to the close quickly of May uh, and May 31 um, is the day through which we knew that we were not going to be gathering inside the building. Uh, our bishop helped us make that decision uh, so that we might uh, be safer um, uh, and not sorry that we were getting together too soon. So I just want to assure you guys that um, the leadership here at Cooks um, are working together on a plan and we will let you know just as soon as absolutely possible when we might be able to get together. We've been busy uh, answering all the questions we need to about how we uh, keep the building sanitized and how we keep surfaces safe for people to bump up against or to touch. Uh, we've been looking at how many people we can fit into two, the two worship spaces that we have. So rest assured, my friends, that we're working on uh, that, believing that there will be a day soon that we can gather together. But until then, we're uh, glad that we can uh, gather this way um, as well. So when we were talking yesterday, I got to be honest with you. I don't even remember how we how we got started or how I got started on the business of the yoke of Christ, um, except that I told you about my dish towel trick and putting on the yoke of Christ. And so that made me automatically think uh, yesterday about the sweet promise that Jesus offers those who will follow him, who love him and want to um, be a part of this kingdom that God is building. And so I want us to go today to Matthew, the 11th chapter, you can see those verses uh, typed on your screen so you can go back and study a little bit on your own later. But let me, um, if, uh, if you'll allow me, let me read these three verses for us today. From Matthew 11, I'm going to start with the 28th verse. Uh, come to me, Jesus says, come to me, all you who are struggling hard, who are carrying heavy loads, and I will give you rest. Put on my yoke, learn from me. For I am gentle and humble, and you will find rest for yourselves. My yoke is easy to bear, and my burden is light. This is God's word for us, God's people. Thanks be to God. It's a little bit hard, um, I want to say right off, to say thanks to God for something that I both love to hear and um, bemoan hearing. Let me say what I mean. Um, when I feel like I am struggling hard, when I feel like I've been carrying heavy loads, what I want to do is to dump them all and just be done with it. But did you hear what Jesus said? It's about exchanging a yoke. It's changing perspective, working smarter, not harder, but work is still involved. And so yesterday when we began to think together about what it means to willingly give up our self-governance to one who is greater than us. It is about exchanging one yoke for another. And so Jesus calls to those who are burdened 
by the religious culture of the day. They had so many rules and regulations in their faith community about uh, not just what you could do and what you couldn't do, but what that if you did those things or if you failed to do those things, how you would either be exempt or you would be credited uh, in, in those things. It set up a completely different kind of theological stance in that uh, it was easy then to put on your yoke and to get busy thinking that you were earning more. Uh, and that's not the way the love of God works. And, and so I think we have to recognize um, this. Uh, yes, Jesus wants us to know we don't have to work as hard as we've been working. There is a new or a different way for us to engage with life. And so let's think for a moment about what it means to make the choice to submit ourselves to the, um, to, to the guidance, to the direction um, of Jesus. You know, discipleship is really... Um, akin to apprenticeship uh, in the same way that um, artists would um, still do align themselves with someone who will teach them their craft they they do it like the one who is teaching them but they do it with their own expression so if we take that word yoke and remember where it comes from, yoke is about, um, is that harness that, um, that we used to use uh, with uh, hooking two uh, hardworking animals together so that there would be a greater reward for their work. Harnessing two together so that they work in unison um, creates a different power than either of them separately and either and the two of them added together. Um, and so being yoked creates an even greater reward for our work. But if we think about this, if we think about being yoked to Jesus, uh, not just in our big work, like what you do for a living, um, uh, parenting your children or grandparenting your grandchildren, uh, those major brushstrokes in our life. If we think about being yoked with Jesus even to do the dishes, to take out the garbage, to plan a menu one more time, all those things that we recognized yesterday can be really big burdens after a while. If we think about yoking with Christ, there is one who has experience, all experience, all power, all wisdom, all knowledge, all peace, all understanding. And those of us who are younger, we haven't lived as long, we haven't experienced as much, we've not been in this place, no matter how chronologically old we are, or how long we have walked by faith with Jesus, we are still less, less powerful, less wise. But when we yoke ourselves with that one who is everything, we, we learn how to handle every opportunity, every obstacle, every situation. Uh, Admiral Byrd uh, said once, we must learn from the mistakes of others. We don't live long enough to make them all ourselves. A and that's wisdom for us to watch what Jesus does, to know that by his power we can do that too. And we must practice by walking alongside the one who will guide us and show us, and it is our lives yoked with the life of Christ, yoked with this one who is our redeemer, um, that creates this um, immeasurable return on what we do. But it is not a logical thing. I want to let go of it all, to drop it all, and I would not define rest as continuing to work, but working smarter. So this is also a challenge for us to redefine what rest is. Uh, we'll get there in just a second. I want to mention two other um, instances in Scripture that I'm aware of 
where um, the reality of us being yoked to someone or something is uh, named. In 2 Corinthians, Paul talks about being unequally yoked with another person. The church, I think, has unfortunately uh, taught and preached and judged uh, based on that uh, about who you hang with and who you spend your time with. Yoking is about a relationship. Um, and an intimate relationship with another person. I, I think the way that God intended for this world to know transformation is when those of us who know abundant life because of our faith in Jesus Christ are not afraid to uh, bump up against, meet, speak to, share time with, um, other people who come from different backgrounds, uh, different denominations, and everything in between. But it is that uh, yoking relationship that Paul warns is very, very hard. And that is when two become one, but the two are very different. It is a volatile, volatile transformation. And it could go um, uh, in the business of how we are changed together. Uh, often it is easier to pull one down than it is to build one up. We don't have that power. Uh, and so uh, being unequally yoked in a relationship with another person is what Paul was talking about. Isaiah, in the 58th chapter, there is a verse about uh, God's promise to release the yoke of oppression. But in that same verse, Isaiah 58, 6, God offers encouragement to take on his yoke. Y'all, that, that ought to tell us something. We will yoke ourselves to something or someone. We're not created to be alone, and we also know that it's easier to work smarter than it is harder. We attach ourselves to people and things and processes all the time. Why would we trade anything for that connection to Jesus? So I mentioned rest a bit ago. Uh, that's the whole reason why Jesus speaks these three verses. Come, you're struggling hard, I know it. You're carrying heavy burdens, I know it. This life will be filled with work. But work can be about the passion of life, too, because we've been given gifts and abilities that we want to offer. And in offering those while yoked with Christ, we can find rest. We've really already talked about one of the two ways I believe rest comes to us. And one is the way we work and live. Uh, work is a non-negotiable. Uh, mind work, heart work, hands and feet work. We are made to be busy and to do. We have been enlivened by the Spirit of God. God has breathed into us and we are created even before that in the image of God. And so the way we work is a reflection of the one who made us. The way we work then as we are yoked with Jesus shows a joy um, and uh, joy de vivre uh, in the way we engage uh, every moment because it is a gift from God, because God is present with us, and because something is happening not just in us and through us, but the world is being transformed when we work alongside the Christ. The second way rest comes to us even as we are yoked is that God has made um, a way for us to know rest while we are yoked with him, and it's called the Sabbath. When we began this time together over a month ago now, I believe I talked with you about Sabbath and finding those places, uh, literal and figurative, and those times, literal and figurative, where you can completely rest in him. Uh, I, uh, one of the burdens that Jesus might speak to is how we used to define what Sabbath is. You can't play cards, you can't dance, you can't do this, you can't do that on the Sabbath. Um, well, maybe you need rules to help guide yourself and you set those for your household. And I would heartily encourage that if that's what you need. 
but being honorable enough to stick to a time you promise God just to rest in Him. Different than your daily quiet time, but to simply allow your body and your mind to find rest in the one who made you is still celebrating the yoke that you have. Remember, a yoke is not a burden, uh, and it is not... Uh, an object that reflects enslavement. In this case, it is a choice, an act of submission, setting aside the ability and the will to self-govern, recognizing that God's wisdom is higher, Jesus's ways are more loving, and that I will know peace. You will know joy in um, in immeasurable ways when we yoke ourselves to him. So I just want to remind you that there are times in my life, and I'm guessing I'm not that much different than you, there are times in our life when we have to flop that dish towel over our shoulder to remind ourselves that we are not alone. I have given um, the direction and guidance of my life over to one who's smarter than me. And I choose in this moment to work alongside the God of the universe. Maybe it's not a dish towel for you. It's something else. I do know this. The stoles that many pastors wear when they preach and lead worship are no different than the yoke that you take on. And it will lead to holy work work just as holy, if not more so, than preaching a sermon, leading a Bible study, praying over a people. Jesus invites you today to set aside what seems like interminable, unfulfilling work and take on his yoke. Let him be your partner. I just want to say, if this is the first time that you are considering what it means to be in an intimate relationship with Jesus, and you want somebody to talk you through what it means to have a personal relationship with your Savior, um, with the one who came to uh, establish the kingdom of God, I would love to talk with you about that. Uh, you can find all of our contact information on the Facebook page. Or you can simply respond here, send me a message on Messenger. Uh, I would love to talk to you about what it means to be yoked with Christ. Let me pray for all of us right now. Lord, we are mindful that so much of the work that we do leaves us exhausted and burdened, and but not in a good way. It's because we try to do it all ourselves. It's all our energy, and we only ask for help, Lord, once we've gotten to the end of ourselves. But you, O oh Jesus, are inviting us to take on your yoke, to walk with you and let you accompany us every moment of our lives so that every spoken word, every act, uh, every word withheld, uh, when it needs to be, is an act of love and grace, and we get to feel the surge of your power in all of our work, but we also get to see the impact of your grace, your mercy, and your love through us. I want to pray right now, Lord, for those who are listening who, um, who think they are yoked to you but really aren't. Lord, convict them and convince them, if you would, of your love and of a, new, a better way, uh, a more caring and loving way to walk with you through this life that you make with such abundance for those of us who follow you. I, I thank you, Lord, already for new relationships with Jesus that are forming because of the revelation of your love and your glory. Help us to be um, those sweet companions for one another. But more than anything, we pray right now, Lord, that you would uh, reveal yourself to us and that as we work today, whatever our task, that we would lean on you, learn from you, and that we would find rest in you even as we work. For we give ourselves to you. Guide us. Lead us. Love us.
and transform us, all in the name of the one who gave his life for us. In the name of Christ, amen. I'm so glad we had a few minutes together. I hope your day is filled with joy and peace. Can't wait to be with you again soon. Bye.